Okay, my name is Anne and I am working as a science, ma science manager here at the MDC. My name is Jeremy Morgan and I work as a postdoc in FMP Berlin. I decided for science, I would say. It was, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a first-hand memory. It's like a teacher in school asked me when I was like, I think 11 or 12 years, if I want to participate in a, in a competition for, in a science competition for uh, teens and kids. It's called Jugendforschul Experimentieren. And then at the end, I stayed there. I stayed there for five years. I think I did like five five different projects. I was planting tomato plants and I was watching birds and um, I was working with students and what is the best way to learn vocabulary. Um, yeah, and then afterwards when I, when I already went to university, I participated in this um, scientific competition as a, as a reviewer. So that was, I changed sides, so to say. Yeah, that was a great experience. I decided when I reached university and I, I knew I wanted to do something which was somehow logical and uh, had argument to it. And I was torn between science and law. I didn't know which way I wanted to go. Um, but I had a really good chemistry teacher in high school. Um, so shout out to Gavin Layton, um, who, who made chemistry really enjoyable. And so then I decided I would do undergraduate chemistry. And then from there, I reached the end of my degree and started working a kind of normal job and found it was a lot less interesting than I expected. And so I went from there into research. And so I did my PhD and now, now I work as a postdoc still in, in research. A postdoc, that's a super tough question because it means so much. It means, first of all, it's a person and it's a scientist, but then it depends so much on the topic, the scientific background, then also the, the work experience this person had before, the way how this person perceived his or her uh, PhD. Um, also, how big is the lab you're working in as a postdoc? Is it a very small lab of a junior group leader? So do you have maybe a very close connection or is it a huge lab where you already have a leadership experience because you are um, responsible for master students and PhD students and in general it's a person who's doing independent science and uh, yeah scientific achievements. I think a, a postdoc as well is is multiple different things I think it's a career stage if you want to go into academia a postdoc is a, a professional scientist who is looking to gain experience but who also already has some skills so they are typically the most highly trained technical member of a lab. But at the same time, they don't have the burden of searching for funding or uh, defending themselves in front of their professorial colleagues. So they have more freedom and they can really pursue maybe the hardest and most challenging research questions whilst uh, having, I think, the luxury to do nothing else. So I think it's a really, um, a really free stage of your career but also a very stressful one because you have to be able to produce something to show that you can be a, a competent scientist. So the work of the postdoc, a postdoc, I would say is very broad because you are somehow the least senior management person and the most senior um, lab person. And so this means you often are the go-between between, between the principal investigator, the supervisor and the PhD students. And so your primary task is research. You, you spend a lot of time designing experiments, executing them. Depending on your position, maybe you have your own funding and you've proposed your project and you're seeing it through to completion, or maybe you're working on a project from the principal investigator. But you also spend a lot of your time mentoring and training and I've done lecturing, demonstrating in labs, teaching. Um, it's really a broad position and if you're on the academic track it's a chance to prepare yourself for how it would be to be a professor. 
If you're more interested in leaving academia, then it's a chance to gain skills, um, particularly collaboration skills or communication skills that could be useful uh, when you look for jobs in the company further on. Oh, the work of a postdoc involves many, many different tasks. And I think there are also tasks you are maybe at the, at the beginning when you start this job not so well aware of, and especially communication skills. So you, you have a PI, you have a, you have a person you're working with and like very close cooperation. You have to communicate there what you want. Um, this, you, you have to listen very well. You have to talk to your PhD students and master students if you're supervising them. But you also have a huge um, responsibility and task in communicating your science. And this means either for public, also on conferences, to, to scientists. So also to like to people who, who know the field very well, right? To experts, but also to lay people. And I think this is another big challenge. Maybe people in the beginning are not so well aware of when they start a postdoc. And then the third aspect of communication to communicate with people you want to have funding from. And this can be like as well experts as you, but maybe also scientists from another field. You have to communicate way broader your ideas and you have to find the the bigger picture, picture, so the mission, your scientific goals. And this acquires a lot of communication and thinking. Um, what else? It's, a lot of, it's, it's also a lot of presenting. It's presenting yourself if you want to have funding, but it's also how to present your data in a, in a format uh, for a scientific um, publication in a well-structured uh, manner. Mm. It's conducting experiments if you're in the wet lab. It's, it's hands-on work and it's very, it's time consuming. This also you have to remember. Um, it's like, um, but it's also cr very creative. I loved it, I loved it. I loved conducting experiments. So um, yeah, they're, they're fans of it, not so, so much fans. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, there are millions of other things. Um. I think the big difference between research as a postdoc and research as a PhD student is that as a PhD student you are there to get a degree, you're there to earn your PhD. And so this means that the scope of the projects that you can undertake is limited by what it takes to get your degree, maybe the time or the resources available. Whereas as a postdoc, particularly if you have your own funding, you have full license to solely concentrate on the research without some of the, the restrictions and that means that typically you can take on riskier projects because you're not required to produce something in a particular time frame like you would with a PhD or more challenging projects because you're more experienced. So I would argue that typically the most exciting breakthroughs um, in science come from postdoc research. Postdoc research is, research is so important because I think this is this is a very very exciting time, a very special time in the life of a scientist because you're, you're done with your degree. You're not a postdoc, you're not a PhD candidate or student anymore, so you don't want to have the, the, necessarily the degree. But you're also not, a, not on the PI level, so where you have to do a lot of administration, organization, uh, organizational stuff to do. And this is, this is a time where you can allow yourself to also have like brave ideas and to follow up um, things no one else in the lab is necessarily interested in but uh, but you are interested in and you see the need in this and then you can also and this will also later on help you to um, to convince others and also to convince yourself right especially when you want to decide do you want to stay in academia or not as a scientist um, this is why yeah this is why research as a postdoc is so important because it, it's it's a very independent time a very brave creative time a time where you can also some things let settle and then pick them up after maybe three months again and yeah they have time to grow and to develop ideas in this time because you're not so much under pressure you're under pressure and it's a very competitive time um, but things can also develop So I think the most valuable qualities are resilience and patience because the, the most challenging part about scientific research is asking a question and finding out the question or the, the hypothesis you've proposed is wrong. 
and this is the most common outcome. So most of the time when you design an experiment and you think you know the answer or you hope for an answer, it doesn't happen. And so you repeatedly design experiments until you can narrow down what is going on and this is, generally entails a lot of failure until hopefully eventually you get a success. And so I think having the patience and the resilience to tolerate all of that failure and all of those roadblocks until you find the answer to the question you're asking um, is the most important quality. Yeah, I think it's, if you want to be a postdoc and you, you want to be a happy postdoc, you, you need passion, scientific passion. This is so important. You need to love what you do and there will be days where you do not love it. But I think if this comes back, this is the, the perfect spirit and the perfect drive and the long breath. You need to be, you need to be patient with yourself, with others, uh, also with the questions that come up with in your mind and your ideas. Um, yeah, so it's a long breath. I think a lot of the challenges are actually structural challenges. So more and more people are having the ability to enter into a postdoc career, but the positions that come afterwards in academia are becoming more and more limited. So you always have this inherent pressure to somehow stand out during your postdoc if you want to try and move into academia later. Um, I think with that comes funding because it's competitive for funding and so you need to make a case for your research and why you're the best person to receive the money. But then also there's some of the culture that comes with this in-between position. Um, it's, it's generally better seen if you leave the lab and maybe even the country that you did your initial training in and go far away to somewhere else. I mean, it's a, in my case as well. Um, and this is really hard and actually a lot of people cannot do this, um, which makes access to doing a postdoc itself kind of a luxury. Um, yeah. Yeah, for me, one the biggest challenge, how can I summarize it, as a lack. It was a, a lack of um, time because I had the feeling I need to spend a lot of time for my research. So there was way little time for, for other things to do, for, for fun time, for a partner, for friends. You're always in a, in a, in a, in a sandwich position there or um, lack of information and there, there we come to this career options. So um, what can I do next? And also what is the next step? Because you, you are doing so individual things that finding a mentor who's really like, who's really case specific, who's, uh, who can support you very individually is very, very hard. And um, yeah, sometimes lack of money, lack of funding, as you said already, um, yeah. Um, I think this is something that is actually a bit up for discussion at the moment in academia because increasingly most postdocs will not end up working as an academic professionally, which means they need to find industries where their skills are valued and fit really well. And this shouldn't be so hard because postdocs are highly trained, they are very capable, um, very intelligent problem solving um, people but translating those skills into the language of people who might employ them I think is the challenge and so the easiest transition outside of academia is into other science-based industries, research in um, pharmaceutical industry, chemicals industry, biology industry but then also in investment banking when you're looking for choosing your investments, in government policy, in managing scientific institutions. There's a huge range of possibilities but the link from the institute or the university to the final position I think is only starting to become really clear for a lot of people and so yeah I think it'll be interesting to see how that changes. And maybe I can add another example. You can also work as a, as a lecturer in, in schools. You can work self-employed as, as a mentor, a mentor for, for other scientists because you're well trained, you have the scientific background, you know about challenges so you can you can push and empower other people for in, in their scientific life. Yeah. So science, scientific writing, medical communication. Um, this is a big one, an increasingly big one, especially yeah. when you have big societal problems. Pandemic. Like
climate change, you need to be able to communicate. You need people who are dedicated to communicate science to the public because this is not part of your average scientist's training. And you can see this with like mixed success across the whole world as <laughs> epidemiologists try and explain what, what COVID-19 is to the population. Another example, um, uh, editor, scientific editor yeah, true. For, for a scientific journal, very, still very close uh, to science, to new findings, methods. The best advice for my scientific career was clearly that I should stay in science. And that may sound a bit odd or broad, but for me at that point it was not clear what my options are and if I want to stay in academia or not, or if I can stay in academia. And suddenly a person from outside academia opened a window for me for many, many different options, job options there are. And then even I, I came back to consider a job in academia, you know, but it's, it's really, it opened my, my mind and um, also my, my passion again, my scientific passion. I think um, the best advice I received was that building a career is trial and error. You can't plan your way through it because you don't know what you're going to find, how you're going to feel about a new role or a new position until you try it. And so it's not something you can plan out until the end. You have to see what works and see what doesn't. And if it doesn't work, you can move on and try something else. And I think coming from the, the story that you're given as you go through your higher education in academia, which is, this is the track, it's a straight road, you'll get to the end. This idea that I could try something new and maybe it wouldn't work, but that's fine, and then I could try something else afterwards, was shockingly innovative, which, which it shouldn't have been. But um, that tells you how strong the, the story is, how, how strong the narrative is. Um, so, yeah, this is the path or the, the perspective that I'll take now, is um, trial and error.